Okay, so what I want to talk about today is one of the mods that I made in Warhammer 2. I want to talk about how I made it in Warhammer 3. This is my canister shot mod. And to be honest, this is probably one of my favorite mods that I've made. Not necessarily the one I'm most proud of, but one of my favorite ones. Because, well, for two reasons. One, um, I think that it totally changes how the, the cannons for the Dwarf and Empire play to make them viable to me, rather than kind of in the vanilla game i don't really use them at all i find them to be less effective than even cheaper artillery um but the other reason is i love empire total war that's probably my favorite total war game and i'm still waiting on empire 2 but um essentially the main reason i actually like this mod is it's actually super simple and despite the simplicity of it you can actually do some really cool stuff that it doesn't seem anybody's really done. So for me, I'm using this as, you know, a switch between the kind of round ball of a cannon and a um, canister shot so that when they get closer, it's more effective close range. Um, but that's not all you can do with it. So for example, maybe you want to have a character switch between like a ice blast and a fire blast or something weapon or maybe you want to have somebody with like a rifle that's single shot and switches to burst fire you know that's something that you could totally do and it might not necessarily fit into this universe but carl franz with an assault rifle might be on my mod list soon i don't know note to self anyway so we're going to go ahead and go through the mod itself but i'm also then going to talk about specifics in case you're going to wanting to do a mod that maybe goes further than what I've done. So let's first start with Rusted Pack File Manager. My game selected is Warhammer 3. I'm going to say New Pack File. I'm going to right click Add from Pack File. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our data folder. And for me, that's Solid State Drive, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Warhammer 3, Data. And all of the tables we're using are in data.pack. So in data.pack, I'm going to look for a few tables. So the ones that I need for my personal mod are missile weapons to projectiles table. This is the like bread and butter of this mod. And then projectiles. So projectiles table. These are the only two tables I need for my mod. Now. I'm going to go ahead and add some other ones that might come up for you if you're making, say, a custom unit with, you know, their own specialty guns. Personally, I'm just modifying an existing unit and its existing gun to switch to a new projectile. So I don't have to do anything else, but, oop, not mill, missile, there we go. So we need the missile weapons table, potentially, we might need that one. And we need the engine, battlefield engine table, potentially and land units table and i'll talk about why that is okay but first let's make this um well actually yeah let's first make this mod so missile weapons to projectiles table you can see the complete thing right here basically what this does is it takes a existing missile weapon that already has a linked projectile and it gives an option to link it to another projectile and it, that other projectile needs to be on this table so the original projectile that's already linked to the missile weapon, if we look in missile weapons tables, this one here, the default projectile, doesn't need to be relabeled. It's just this the new one that you want to switch to. And that's it. You just take the existing one that you uh, want to change over. So the missile weapon in my case is going to be the dwarf and the empire's cannons. And we're going to give them their new projectile. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and select these and delete them, add row. Now, I've already gone through and messed a lot with these stats and such. So I'm just copying it over from my working mod. Um, and I'll go through this. So essentially, we have the Empire Cannon, the Witch's Hammer, which is like the Regiment of Renown Cannon. So they have a new projectile that's linked. It's Grape Shot and my magic grape shot. So since the witch's hammer shoots magical bullets, I made a grape shot that also shoots magic. The dwarf cannon has a few options, and I think this has to do with like Thoric or something, if I remember right, it's been a while, but he has the ability to 
or maybe it's just a dwarf item in general that was added with Thoric, so maybe that's my confusion. But basically, um, you could add flaming to the cannon or penetrating shot or seeking shot to the can normal cannon. So that's what these missile weapons are. They're actually labeled as different missile weapons to the original, so I have them as well. Um, but basically, I have grape shot for the dwarf, and in the case of the flaming cannon, I figured I'd make the grape shot flaming, so that's also there. The penetrating and seeking, um, I didn't feel like there was any need to do anything with them for the grape shot, so I just left it as normal grape shot for the dwarf. So again, the, these projectiles are what we can switch to besides their normal default projectile. So let's go ahead and define those projectiles now. So here, this is all the projectiles out there, but I'm making my own. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. I'm going to add row. And again, I have this already made. So essentially, let me walk you through some of these. So first of all, the normal cannonballs. So the great cannonball, the witch's hammer cannon, the dwarf cannonball, and all of its variations are here. And normally, I wouldn't need these. I have these as references. Um, I also originally, when I developed my grape shot and determined the damages and how they worked. I also used um, default units from the game that already had like shotgun type guns um, and used their missile weapons as references. They're not here because they're not being edited, um, but I did put a lot of time into trying to get a good balance of the gun working the way I wanted, but not being so horribly overpowered that nobody would use anything else. Anyway. But the main reason I'm also leaving these in is I actually made some very small changes to this that I'll talk about in a sec. So anyway, let's talk about the mods themselves. So this is the key that I'm using. And again, anytime I'm talking about the Grape Shot, much like my other mods, I just give it the same name every time. But um, this is the projectile key that is linked in the missile weapons to projectile. That's that key. Artillery type. Shot type, um, again, find something in vanilla that fits to it, but in this case, it's artillery canister for me. Um, explosion type, if it exploded, it would need to mention that. Air resistance, basically, uh, if you have high air resistance, it kind of drops faster and stuff. Spin type, this would be if you had like a throwing axe, it spins. Projectile number, this is the actual burst shot, like the shotgun shot. So Normally, a projectile shoots one thing, but a shotgun shoots multiple things. So for mine, it's 16. Um, and But you can do kind of any number. There's probably some limit that would cause the game to break. But anyway, trajectory sight. Um, this is kind of the just it's a low. It's a cannon. It shoots low. Mortars would shoot higher and stuff like that. The effective range is how far it will target things. So in this case, it's 200 um, as opposed to the 450 of the normal. So 200 uh, for the shotgun. It's 190 for the dwarf, because if you look, the dwarf cannons are a little bit closer range than the um, Empire, so I match that here. The minimum range talks about uh, where, basically, if they're within, in our case, 8 meters, your cannon won't shoot at them. So I could set it to 0 if I wanted to shoot them at point blank, but um, 8 meters is point blank enough. Max elevation is just... Um, like what angle they can shoot at. The muzzle velocity is how quickly the bullets travel from the, um, like are fired out of the muzzle, obviously. The muzzle velocity, imagine that. Marksman bonus is how accurate they are to the calibration area. Um, so basically, if you look here, it um, reduces the size of our calibration area with the land units accuracy. So the accuracy in land units table and marksman and calibration area all have come into play on accuracy. But anyway, um, if you notice, they're actually lower than the marksmen of the normal round ball, um, and that's because that's kind of the tendency of the shotgun units in general. The spread determines how much each of those things spread from them. So if you have a high spread, they'll be very wide blast, and low spread or none means there's not none. The damage and AP damage is the normal damage and armor piercing damage. And you might say, well, notice how much lower this is. This is per projectile. And so the damage potential of the um, canister shot is actually about double that of the normal round ball, but it also only ever really hits things with one um, bullet. So it's not hitting a whole bunch of guys at once with 
multiple bullets. Each bullet is individually hitting people. Um, so the damage is low, but also if you look at the actual stats, you'll think that the, the damage is way too high. But I've spent a lot of time, and essentially the idea behind these damages after playing around with them for quite some time was that if I took a normal round ball cannon and the uh, canister shot cannon and fired at the same units at their max distance, they basically have done the same amount of damage to that unit by the time that unit gets to them. So essentially, the additional range of the round ball let it do damage for a longer period of time, and it's able to do essentially the same amount of unit damage as that shotgun one did over its shorter range to that unit. That was kind of the goal of it. Again, because I didn't want to change this unit to make it too much more powerful. I just wanted to make it so it was more user-friendly, close range, and things like that. Or just kind of more devastating to units when they get in close on them. Okay, so can bounce? Essentially, do you want the projectiles to be able to bounce, or will they just like stick in the ground? Now, because it's a, you know, their bullets are round, I want them to be able to bounce. Plus, for those of you who have ever utilized like a shotgun or anything like that, you know that the bullets definitely like to bounce if you shoot, say, a ground. Anyway, collision radius. Um, so the collision radius in this case is just how close the projectiles have to be to an object to count as a hit. So with round balls, I have they're higher than my small bullets here, um, but this is for the buildings, oddly enough. It's collision with buildings. There's another one later on that as units, so we'll talk about that. Base reload time is how quickly it takes for them to reload. And this is actually why I need the original ones in here is because the base reload time is originally 22 seconds. And I felt that that was just way too long. And also with a bit of research, um, supposedly a average cannon group like from Napoleonic era could reload a cannon in about 20 seconds. So that's why I went with 20 seconds. And the 14 seconds is also about how long it took them to reload um, canister shot. So they were actually quicker at reloading it, interestingly enough. Um, but the big thing, like I said, is I just felt it was a little too slow. And um, obviously, like more veteran units will reload faster. And the 20 seconds is not like some veteran Napoleonic era cannon shot person. This was like your standard crew. And so I felt that 20 seconds seemed fair. Okay, calibration distance. This is like how close the units have to be before your calibration area is as good as it's going to get. So basically at 275 meters, your calibration area is 8.5 meters, and it doesn't improve as they get closer. Um, now the uh, buckshot is obviously closer because it shoots closer, so it has a closer range. So at 122 meters, this is when they're going to be as accurate as they can be. The calibration area, again, is how wide of an area is where they're shooting. So like, basically they can hit anywhere inside of a circle 8.5 meters wide once they get into this max calibration. And again, that's all based on like accuracy and marksman bonus and this calibration distance. Um, for me, I have 15, so it's actually wider. Um, now, bonus versus infantry and large. This is the bonus damage that's dealt to either infantry and large in this weapon. I don't have anything there. Projectile display is what it looks like. I have rifle bullets because they're a bunch of little bullets rather than big cannonballs. The overhead stat effect is when the bullet whizzes over a unit, does it cause some kind of effect to it? Without hitting, it just has to go over them. So it like spooks them or whatever. Contact effect, much like this morale here, when it hits them, does it like cause them to be scared or whatever? Projectile audio is what the projectile sounds like. In this case, it's multi-impact for me. It's the, the multiple bullets hitting the ground. The shockwave radius is the damage, uh, like area around the bullet that will damage units. So it's much like your, um, what is it, collision radius, but collision radius is for buildings and war engines. Um, for the, what is it, shockwave radius is for units. And since these are smaller bullets, 
Um, they really just have to hit them. They can't just kind of get close. Um, can damage buildings. I want it to still be able to damage buildings. The burst size. Now, this is what I was talking about with like Carl Franz with an assault rifle, right? Um, this would be the burst fire. So if I wanted three round burst, I would put three here. Um, burst shot delay is how much time in between each shot. So it could shoot like one, then the next, then the next, or maybe you do it faster. The gravity, if it's negative one, it will mean it's like normal gravity. Um, I think any other number will make it like less affected by it. Um, but again, I just pull vanilla stuff. Like I choose a unit that's similar to it. The mass is how heavy those bullets are. Now, even at 10, um, this might even be a little high. You'll see occasionally when it shoots people it will, that it doesn't kill, it will hit them and just knock them down, which I think is fair. Um, so anyway, homing parameters. This is just like abilities that might increase its ability to home and stuff. First person parameters, so this is for the per first person shooting stuff. Again, choose a vanilla thing. Ignition amount, zero or one, basically. One means it catches fire, so the dwarven fire burst, um, canister is here a one, but otherwise it's zero. Is magical, so in the case of the witch's hammer, uh, it's a magical burst fire as well, so I put um, magic. Can target airborne, yes uh, or no if you don't want that. Fixed elevation is just kind of like the elevation of fixed trajectory. Same thing. I don't know how it's different from the other like max trajectory, but whatever. Projectile penetration. I just pulled this from the standard like um, shotgun units. It's medium. This is the range at which the bullets actually expire. So I have them being the same as the other range i could maybe drop them down a bit but basically once the bullet has traveled a certain amount of distance it will just disappear you can have it go infinite um i might change this down i don't know it doesn't really matter i feel like the bullets can go far that's just not super accurate at that distance so if a random stray bullet hits some guy 500 meters away i think that's fair is beam launch burst okay this is like for beam weapons um, expire on impact, so when it hits, it just disappears, so like a cannon, uh, like an explosive grenade or something like that. Can roll, so in the case of like cannonballs and stuff, can it roll? Yes, it can. Um, for shotguns, again, I'm like, I'm a little on the fence on this one. I think that currently I have it on can roll, obviously, but it might change in the final mod. So, um, so in this case, the volley here wait the shots per volley i already talked about this so yeah so that's burst fire i'm trying to remember the volley oh yeah shots per volley so essentially um this would be for like uh i think the like organ guns and stuff like that so they have multiple cannon parts on it rather than being kind of like the hell cannons or whatever no i don't remember what the empire's cannons are called where they shoot multiple shots but theirs is the burst fire and the shots per volley is kind of more like the i think the organ gun i want to say but i could be wrong on that um trail always on so whether you turn off the trail or not in your ui this makes it so it's always on so screw you in your settings um Anyway, fired by mount, so this would be, I believe, for like the lizard min mounts, or maybe potentially like if it's the um, the tank, the steam tank or whatever. Lock on multiple fire positions, so this is um, track multiple spots. Prefer central targets. This one's really important because um, if you notice, sometimes some units, they'll shoot guys like on the outside of a unit. And that leads to a lot of misses where if they were shooting centrally, you know, a stray bullet being a little off is going to hit guys to the right or left. And so this prefer central target enables that to happen. And for the normal cannons, they have it. And also for obviously for the shotgun to do the most damage, right? I want it to be hitting the central targets. So I like that. Can damage vehicles, much like the damage buildings, you have to select it. Now, the building modifier or damage modifier, this is something that tells you like how much damage does it do to buildings and um, vehicles. 
So for me, I wanted to do less damage to it than um, the normal round balls so that, yes, I could technically use it on um, vehicles or on walls and stuff, but it's not going to be as good. And in fact, I'm probably actually going to drop this even further to like a 0.3 just to make it that much worse. So at 0.5, it's pretty cool. It's a little lower, but fairly close to round ball um, to a wall, but I really don't want that happening. Um, so essentially this is just one is a hundred percent damage, two would be double damage and a decimal would be like 30% damage, 30% of the original damage. Scaling damage. So this is just in projectile scaling. So we don't really need to mess with that, but you know, you can look at the vanilla ones for more information on that is a spell. So projectiles like fireballs and basically all your spells that you shoot are also projectiles. But that's a whole nother thing, like developing spells. So we're not going to talk about that, but that's this. Vegetation ignore time. I did two here because other shotgun units had it. Missile mirror start time. So I believe these are new. So these two are new tables or new columns on the table But uh, to Warhammer 3. But basically this is for, I believe, the cafe like mirror projectile ability. Um, and so this is just the delay between the time they get shot with the projectile and when they shoot it back at people. And then can damage allies, that's self-explanatory. If it's clicked, it can hurt them. If it's not, it won't hurt your allies. Okay, so that's that thing done, taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and right-click, rename, and call it Mass Mustachio Canister Data. So again, why I've renamed these is so that this, this is just the stuff that I've modded, and the game will then know that these are just to be added to the data. If you leave it as data, it will say that this is the complete data set and it will delete anything that isn't there. All right, so my missile weapons to projectiles I've already done, so I'm gonna also rename that. Mass Mustachio Canister Data. Okay, so again, that's my modified one. Now let's talk about why I added these. So as mentioned, here's the missile weapon, here's the projectile. If I made my own missile weapon, I would need to modify that here. So let's say in the example of like Karl Franz's assault rifle, I'd have to have a gun, said Karl Franz assault rifle, and I'd have to give it a projectile that's the normal one. So maybe this would be the single fire, that's the standard shot. And I'd need to define that projectile here, and the projectile would be here. Then the missile weapon to projectile, I would add the same missile weapon, his assault rifle, here, and I would do a projectile burst fire, perhaps. And then I'd have to define burst fire here. Now, that would be his land uh, his missile weapon, which is defined in land units. So if you look here, for in case of Carl Franz, I'd have to find Carl Franz and go primary missile weapon, assault rifle. Okay. Now, in the case of dealing with these cannons, it's not a missile weapon. The missile weapon in the cannon unit defines the like crew and their missile weapons, and the crew doesn't have a missile weapon, but they do have an engine, and that is over here an engine. And so that is defined on the battlefield engines table. So if you're making a cannon or something like that, you have your cannon name here. And then this is where you link its missile weapon. So if I was going to make um, some new cannon, I would need to make it in the battlefield engines table, link it to a crew in the land units table under engine. And the missile weapon here would then be defined in the missile weapons table. And if I wanted to do multiple shots, I'd have to put it in here as well, linking both different projectiles. So that's why I added those just to talk about, you know, in case you're doing some other mods with it. Because I, like I said, this, this table is super cool. You can do some really neat stuff. But anyway, I don't really need these other things for my mod, so I'm going to go ahead and right click and delete these. Now that I have these things done, my mod is complete. I've renamed everything. I'm going to go ahead and save pack file as. And I'm going to save it as the name I want it to be. So in this case, I'm going to have Mass Mustachios Canister Shot. Save. Replace it. Yes. Okay, so now it's saved in my data folder. And in my data folder, if we take a look, we will see that I have the um, pack named. But I also have a PNG that's a 256 by 256 PNG with the exact same name. I need that to be able to upload my mod. So what I do now is go to Warhammer 3, and I go over to my mod manager, 
and I hit, I go to my um, canister shop mod right here, we can see that. And I'm just going to hit this folder. And this is a kind of units, I suppose, and hit upload, except and that's all there is. It's now uploaded the workshop. You can go into your workshop um, and change the name, add a description, and make it visible to the public, and your mod is done. So anyway, hopefully that helps you better understand this, um, this table and kind of some of the other uh, tables involved with missile weapons and projectiles. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching.